but teachers just go to a course um, and then they go to assignments right here then they want to add a book which is assignment so they click on plus assignment so the normal thing when you when teachers are adding an assignment so let's do something about the united states like this um, you can enter a comment here make the exercise like this. Um, and then you have to add some points on how many points the exercise will be. You can still change it afterwards, but it's important to put it in already. Um, and then of course, the submission type will be an external tool. And if the admin install book widgets the right way, teachers can just click on find and book widgets will appear here as an external, an external, uh, external tool. Um, so they just click on it and book widgets will open uh, completely inside the canvas environment. You can make it a little bit larger if you want. Um, sometimes that's easier too. Um, so this is actually uh, book widgets where I have all my exercises. This is completely private to the teacher unless they are working with book widgets groups and they can work together with other teachers as well. Um, but in this case, this is just what I see as a teacher. My students don't see it yet because I haven't shared an exercise yet. Um, so the create new widget button is, of course, all of, everything about book widgets, where teachers get to choose a new widget type. So they choose what kind of exercise they want to create. There are test and review widgets. And the most popular ones here are the worksheet, split worksheet or the quiz, because that allows teachers to create interactive assignments with multiple types of questions. We have about 30 different question types and I think about 90% of them get automatically created. We have some games also real, uh, real fun to rehearse um, and to practice uh, new lesson content for students. Make it visual, your lessons, and then we have some a nice planner where students can go through individually uh, and they have to pick off every single task. So this is an interactive learning path actually for your students. So they click on the new widget and they just choose what kind of widget type they want to create. I'm just going with the worksheet here to show you the variety of question types we have here. Um, they fill out this template. So this, all these buttons are a template where students, where teachers can start adding content. So they, they have to add questions, they have to enable options. And when they're done with that, they can share their exercise immediately with their students. So here, the teacher clicks on add question and then you can see that we have about 30 different question types, fill in the blanks, drag words and sentences uh, and so on. So really, real uh, a lot of question types. So students can even record their voice uh, in response to a question of the teacher. Um, you can add audio, you can add images and it's all within book widgets. So we do have an audio a function where students, where teachers can just click record add their audio inside book widgets without using any other tools. And of course, it's also in Canvas. Uh, so because of the integration, it all it's all there. So they just click on the question type they want to add. Let me just show you a multiple choice question type, how it looks like. They add their question. What's the capital of Colorado? That would be Denver, I guess. We have Washington, Washington, we have Sacramento, and you just add some possible answers here. Um, and then you just go to the preview as a teacher to look how this, yeah, how this looks like to take a look. Um, and this is actually entirely how your students will see it before you can send it over to the students. I can see that my language is still in Dutch and this is something you can change as well. So if you're a language teacher, it's really nice to have dialogue buttons and everything teachers, students can see in your widget, in your exercise to translate it to the language you teach. In this case, I'm just going to put it in English again. Um, I'm going to share this with my students, so I just click on share. I'm going to share another exercise I have ready for you right here. So USA, I'm going to choose this one and share it immediately inside Canvas. 
So I click on select and it's in there now. Um, you can add a due date, everything that's in Canvas you can do right now and then save and publish. So you can see the exercise it loads entirely inside Canvas. You could also choose that it has to open in a new window. That's up to the teachers how they would like it. And you can see it as a teacher here as well. Um, I'm going to open something else. If teachers go to bookwidgets.com and log into their account, they can follow up students live as well. So I'm now in my account that is linked to my, my Canvas account and I have this button live. And this means that when students start making the exercise, I can follow up from them uh, on them from a distance. So they're all faced to their laptops and I cannot see what they're doing on their computers or on their devices. Um, I, I would really want to know if they're doing the exercise and how it goes. Um, so this is something I'm going to show you. I'm going to jump out of my screen here. Here it is. So, um, so I, this is my student view. A student just goes to the course um, from the teacher and they will see the assignment. So they get notifications as well. So they can go to assignment notifications and then just click on the new exercise that, ju that just got shared or they can go to assignments here and there they will find the United States quiz as well. So they can just click on it and it will open immediately inside um, Canvas. Again, it could be a new screen that pops up as well. Um, so I just... Uh, logged in as a student, and this is a Geo Geography 101 course. So it detects a course that is active, and it detects also an exercise that is active at this point. You can click on the exercise, just choose the exercise you want to follow up on, and then you can see that um, I, as a teacher, signed in the exercise in my teacher account, but also Alex, my student, also signed in, but she didn't do anything yet. So when I start as a student, when I start making the exercise, it will, they will see that you can follow up live then the, uh, if they're making the right connections or not. And uh, that's also possible. So let's make it Yosemite, Vet Valley, and Monument Valley. So I have completely right as well. Uh, the fun thing about this is that you can also follow up on your students by clicking on the name of your student and then you can see the connections they really make so the, the real content of the exercise not just if they were right or wrong i'm going further as a student here so what's your favorite holiday so this actually is a question type that that's uh, not that is not automatically created um, so you can it's easy to follow up live as well to just see what they are writing down so lake Tahu. And then you can see that my student is typing it completely live. Uh, I went there skiing once. It's beautiful. And let's make some mistakes like this. Um, so it's beautiful and you can see it happening live. Next question um, of Colorado. So Denver, this is okay. You can see again that I got it right here. Um, and then we have to do the this one, also fun. Uh, one is Texas, two is Florida. Um, I think it's it's not Utah, but I'm going to put it there. And washing will make a mistake again. And then we have California. So when my students are done, they just click on submit. So they're entirely logged into your Canvas account. So the only thing I have to do is click on submit and then it's sent successfully to the teacher again. Um, now, as a teacher, of course, I would like to see my results. Uh, the student results, what they've entered. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at that again. So now I'm logged in as a teacher again. You should see my screen. I go to um, my course 
but not to assignments. I go to book widgets results. And again, if you've installed integration, you can see this popping up in your canvas um, and just click on book widgets results. Uh, click on the class. So normally your students are divided into classes. Um, you will see the class here and you can just click on the class you want to create. In this case, my students are not connected to a classroom. Um, so, and then you click on the exercise you want to take a look at. So this was the exercise that my student filled out. So I just click on it and I get this handy overview with some statistics. So you will get answers. So all your students will be listed here. All the students that of course submitted the exercise will be listed here. You get a date, the hour when they submitted it and the automatically created score already. Um, you know, in this case, I know as a teacher that I added one question that can't be automatically graded. So I'll have to take a look at that question and give some feedback if necessary. Um, then you also have all the questions in the exercise and the average score of all your students on this particular question. This is really handy to see if you went over all your student work, you gave some feedback and you returned the work. You can also see, the, for example, if this name, the indicated states of on the map, the average score would be 30%. You know that your students didn't understand this part of the lesson. And this is something you should bring back to your students in your classroom the next day or um, the next lesson. There are two, two ways to grade student work. The first way is student per student. You just click on the first student in the row here. And then you come into this interactive PDF where you can start adding comments and feedback. You can enter a summarizing comment here. You can also enter a comment below every single student, uh, below every single question. Um, for example, good job. Um, you can see that this question is the one that still needs to be graded. So it will alert you that you still have to add a grade. Um, but you can also enter comments in a student's answer. So if there is a mistake, so it's beautiful, for example, you can just indicate the mistake and enter a comment. So spelling. And just 2.5. Um, and then again, you can see this is all right. And there are some mistakes here as well. Again, you could say, OK, Washington is, is right. It's just a spelling just spelling, but override the scores and give her a point for it because she knew it was Washington, but she, she didn't write it correctly. So this is kind of the way of giving feedback below every single question or in the student's answers, that's also possible. Um, we do have added a filter since two weeks ago. Uh, it's really nice to go to use this filter to just filter out correct answers. So you'll see that everything that is right will be filtered out and you will only see the questions that meet your attention as a teacher. And um, so all the right answers that, yeah, it's okay. So my students know that, um, but the other things still need my attention as a, as, as a teacher and I can start adding comments. Uh, from this, I can just jump to the next student uh, and the next and the next and the next. So this is one way of grading. The other way of grading is by clicking on the first question in the row. My filter is still enabled, so I won't see correct answers. And this is a correct answer, so I'm going to disable this. And here you will see the complete list of all your students with just the answer on this particular question. So this is the way of grading question per question. We do have other filters as well, for example, to group identical answers. So if a few students have the same answers, uh, maybe have everything completely right, you could group the answers and enter a, co a feedback comment, uh, just one comment, and it will go to all your students even individually. So this spares a lot of time as well. Just click on the arrow to go to the next question and the next question and the next question, and then you're done grading. Um, so when we are done grading, we would want to send this back to the, student, to the student so they can see the grades and the feedback as well. So I just click here. I am going to choose to return the results. Um, 
this is interesting that um, in Canvas, they just get a grade. So of course, I would want them to get feedback and their answers as well. So you'll have to send a copy of the results via mail as well. And I'm going to send this to my email so I can show you. Like this. Um, and then I'm going to return the work to my students. When this is completely full, I can just quit this and my students will have um, the returned work. Close. Now I'm going to take a look at my email. So you can see that I got an email right here. And this is actually what the student gets. So in the attachment, please find the results of your work along with my feedback. So when they click on the PDF and when they open the PDF, um, they will see their answers, the grades, the feedback of the teacher, the comments, and the, the grades per question as well. Um, so this is what they get back. They can save it, they can review it later on when they have a big test coming up um, and they can really use it for differentiation as well to just learn a little bit more about their own answers and what they know and what they don't know yet. So that is the complete loop of creating an exercise inside Canva, sending it to students um, and grading it and returning the work to your students.